Hey guys, and welcome back to Mega Man Battle Network 6. If I had played the other games in the series, this is where I'd be getting all tingly and teary-eyed. But alas, I have played not even but the one. I'm still going through this one. Ah, uh, well, I mean, even at the same time, as somebody who has more nostalgia for a Battle Network than you, let's be honest, it's really just Capcom reusing the assets again, because they've gotten a lot of mileage out of the same stuff throughout this series, and of course, if this is going to be the last game, they might as well go for it one last time. Well, that's a cynical view on things, but when you were first playing through this, how did you feel to be able to go back to your, like, hometown? Okay. I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty good, but at that point, you know, I was really enjoying uh, Battle Network 6, and I'm not saying this to set up like a, but then it got worse kind of scenario, no, no. Uh, you know, I was enjoying the game and the ability to go back and kind of, um, you know, kind of catch up with everybody. It did really kind of help inspire previous uh, nostalgic memories that I had for, the, you know, the other games past. I actually have a few examples in, like, other video games that kind of defines the trope of, like, nostalgia, like going back to places you've been in other games and so on. Uh, first and foremost, probably the most like well-known and well-loved one, Kanto from uh, Generation 2 of Pokemon. Oh yeah, definitely. Still the best post-game in any video game, I think. Like, it's just immeasurable. Second one, you probably won't be able to relate to this, but um, there's a, a mission in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, where you actually go back to, uh, I believe it's like Liberty City, and it's snowing, and it's just beautiful. Wait, is that like the whole city? Or can you just like run no, around it? No, 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 it's just like a bistro that you're doing a hit on. Okay, okay, alright, because I'm fixing to say, like, I don't know if they've done that in Grand Theft Auto yet, where you could just do like two big cities and kind of go back between each one, probably not. And my final one is not as big as those, but it's in Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, when you're just kind of bopping about, I don't know if this is after the game's over or not, and you just see like Bao, or Bo, or how you pronounce her name, like, in front of the museum in the rich town. From what I heard about the Thousand Year Door, a lot, if not all, of the party members from Paper Mario were actually supposed to make reappearances in that game. But they got cut for time or things like that, which sucks because I would have liked to see those guys again because I really enjoyed Paper Mario and Thousand Year Door was pretty good too. Yeah, are you glad I finally played that game by the way? Yes, yes I am. Now I can stop bugging you about it. Oh, don't worry, there will be other things to bug me about to watch or play. Oh, of course. Ah, uh, look at our house. So empty. Why has nobody, like, bought that yet? It's prime real estate. I don't know. I mean, this is ACDC town. I would imagine the prices are fairly low. Hmm. Now, we were told to, like, go around and talk to everyone. It's one of those scenarios. And I thought the guy in the back was someone I had to talk to. But, as we will see, he is just a sub-chip dealer. I like how uh, he's operating his skivvy sub-chip store here in a random corner of ACDC town. You know, I'm sure you'll get a lot of business that way. Thing, and that's kind of a tradition for the series. Just people kind of offloading their shit on street quarters in random places, so. Hopefully it's money. Okay, well, it's an HP memory. Good enough. I like the music of ACDC Town. Is this the same one from previous games? Uh, yeah, something close to that at the very least. I, I, I mean, like... I don't know where the sense is going, I apologize, but... <laughs> well, find the point quickly, please. It is the same theme. If it's remixed, I can't really tell you off the top of my head, but the tune is pretty recognizable to me. Uh-huh. They kind of cut off a lot of it, though, because, like, this, uh, uh, yellow house here is kind of supposed to be... It's Yai's mansion, I think, and in previous games, like, you had more span of uh, ACDC Town to actually explore, including walking up to the school, you can actually go inside. You know, things like that. Well, but obviously, obviously they yeah. had to cut that out because of, we gotta put in the brand new amazing school that he goes to now. Oh my god, it really is Kanto from uh, Generation 2 then. Yeah, that's true, they cut out certain parts from memory space. To be fair, Iwata basically single-handedly programmed that into fucking Gold and Silver and gave us that amazing post-game. I know, like, that's that's the thing I'll remember the guy for, just giving us that incredible second, like, it's like the second quest, and, like, 
other various Nintendo games like Zelda and things like that. It's just like this whole new world we live in, and you know, you can go do that, and that's pretty great. In my but you've still got to catch them all, Pokemon that's Goto. That's true. <laughs> Although at that point, at that point, it was easier to do it. And thankfully, you can finally jack into that squirrel statue like you've been telling me about. Yes! Because I know you've been looking, yes, I know you've been looking forward to that. I had to, man, I had to. Wait, what, what is that floating? Hold on, hold on, hold on. What is that? Okay, that's the squirrel statue. But you see it from the front. I swear to God, when I first saw that at this vague moment here, I thought, is that Sigma's head from Mega Man X? <laughs> you could not have been further from what it actually was, my friend. Although, although, considering the fact that we have seen a few Mega Man X characters in this series already, Sigma not showing up as a virus kind of makes no sense to me. You would think that this would be the first instinct uh, the developers at Capcom would have. Let's do Sigma as a virus. Why not? Am I right? Well, is he virus-like in the other games? Yes, uh, uh, he actually sort of merges with the Maverick virus at one point and becomes the Sigma virus. So that's why he can keep going to multiple bodies, because he's a virus and he can't really be shut down. Except the part where they completely punked him and shut him down in Mega Man uh, X8, but that was a stupid plot point, and we're not going to talk about it anymore. Okay. So tell me a bit about uh, Roll.exe. What's her function in the series? Well, uh, like I said before, you know, she's basically the net navi of male, and uh, she and Mega Man kind of have a quasi-romantic relationship, and oh man, you're going to learn what that means later on. Um, so, like, you know, they have that kind of relationship. You always tend to get roles of battleship in the video games. You know, it's a fairly decent starting chip where, you know, she does a multi-hit attack and she heals Mega Man for a little bit. Like I said before, you only really fight her in Mega Man Battle Network 4. And even then, her fight's kind of easy. I remember fighting through it. It's not really that hard. But it was, you know, an interesting change of pace. And I kind of wish they continued with that after a while, actually. You know, I wish, personally that we had a chance to fight Glide, because in the anime, what they did with him is because Yai is rich, of course, because uh -huh. she's a rich girl. They gave Glide, like, a bunch of crazy, expensive battle chips, so he'll pull out stuff like Life Swords, which is, like, a really, really powerful sword, and he used that to whoop Mega Man's ass, but then later, I think they fight Number Man, and Glide tries to do that, but because he doesn't know how to fucking fight that well, and because Number Man actually has a strategy, Glide doesn't know what to do and things like that. So Mega Man has to save him, proving that experience is better than money, except in the real world, where that's obviously not true. Yeah. Sorry, kids, you're fucked. Your future's destroyed. Yeah, money makes the world go round, I suppose. I think I've gotten most of the HP memories that you can buy from stores. A lot of them are just, obviously, ones I've skipped over. I will try and go back before the final boss and uh, pick a few up. Well, I mean, after a while, like, the money, uh you know, requirement to buy HP memories just goes up really, really fast. You're going to have to grind after a while. And I think there are actually programs for, like, Navi Customizer that let you do that. Don't quote me on that, though. Is this what happened when uh, Obi-Wan was watching a Qui-Gon Jinn through the lasers? <laughs> this is a much more mundane version. Unless Darth Maul.exe has got a court behind this Mr. Prog and shiver him in the back, I think we're going to be okay. Hmm. I don't know any NetNavi who uses double lightsabers. Uh, the closest thing I can think of is Laser Man, who was an actual guy. Huh? You never heard of Laser Man? Okay, well, of course you haven't. This is the first time you've played the series, I'm sorry. Laserman.exe, okay. He was actually a very important NetNavi in Mega Man Battle Network 5, and kind of a neat, interesting design, I gotta say. I believe he was also Whoa! Whoa! That's amazing! Yeah! Am I right? He was actually created by a person, and they put him in the game, and they made him, instead of, like, an optional Navi, he's actually, like, a legitimate near-the-end-game final boss, so that's pretty cool. Now, I don't want to cover up the gameplay, so I'll put the picture after the fight's over, and that's a little message for uh, future Tom64 right there. Okay, there you go. What I wanted to say earlier was, I kind of poo-pooed the roll chip in the beginning of the game, like, oh, that won't do much. But uh, I found myself using it a lot, and it's helped me out of a few scrapes, honestly. Oh, yeah, definitely. And the later versions, like, you know, roll 3, roll SP, things like that, the damage and healing output is actually pretty good, so it's not too bad of a chip to throw in your folder.
Okay, laserman.exe. Look at this shit. That's pretty good. And uh, no, he doesn't have a classic design, by the way. As we, as I've said, of course, he was designed by somebody else, and they put him in the game. So there you go. Huh. I don't know. I just love the like neon blue and shit. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of the claw feet, I'll be honest with you, but the rest of him is just him basically wearing a dapper suit, and he's got, like, Cyclone eyes going on here, which I gotta like. That is correct, right? Cyclone eyes? I've never actually watched Battlestar Galactica. Oh, uh, well, if you're wrong, we can just say you're wrong and all have a good giggle and a laugh. Here's a couple of other EXEs that I found just bopping about the wiki here. Metalman.exe? That's pretty good. Like, I like that one. And Drillman.exe. And as I was saying to Helldragon earlier, that's just basically his classic one, but streamlined. Yeah, and a lot of the uh, Navi designs kind of go for that, and I think they work pretty well as an opinion. Drillman, uh, like you, you know, shown there, is another particularly good example of that kind of thinking. And of course, we've seen like really good redesigns like Airman. Oh, Mick, you were Dex Light. Yeah, Mick is basically. Uh, Dex Light, except he doesn't actually try to fight you. I mean, he tries, but he never actually commits the fighting you. I know I'm near the end of the game, like, at the point we're doing this, but Tab was given, like, no development at all. He just basically runs the shop and that's it. That's true. I mean, they don't really do much with him. I guess they just needed a guy to run the chip shop now that Higsby wasn't going to be there. They should have just had Higsby move. I'll be honest with you. Just kind of moved to the city and there he's running the shop again. Because he did get some character development. In the anime, you know, he was crushing super hard I on Miss yeah. Mari. And it didn't really work out, so. Okay, let's go free that Mr. Prog. You know, I only come here for a social visit. Now they got me doing side quests just like the old days. Ah, uh, so nostalgic. Freedom. Horrible, horrible freedom. I wish to be caged again. Yeah, too bad I don't have a computer to go home to. Do they have homeless navvies? Well, they have solo navvies, so probably. Well, there's lost data, so maybe it's a similar kind of concept. That's true. Good stuff. And instead of, you know, just running back and, you know, wasting time, we're instead going to, like, jack out and basically come in to the HP and we can talk to Roll there. Yeah, that's always a good little shortcut to remember when you play these games. Sometimes it is actually faster to just jack out and then jack back in, and you'll get to where you need to go soon enough. Uh-huh. There, I did your work for you. Can we go now? So is that meant to be, like, hair strips? What's going on? You know, a... Well, you say hair strips, but she actually has, like, a ponytail-ish attachment coming out of the back of her head. I say this very lightly because it's clearly a flat piece of cardboard she's got going on there. Uh, I guess it's more like a... I'm gonna look this up. I don't know what the fuck the ribbons are supposed to be for. <laughs> yeah, Google, what the fuck's going on with roll.exe? Don't even give any context. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh... Uh, I guess they're just supposed to be antenna, hmm. you know, in general. It's an interesting idea. Like, uh, it's certainly not what I would have normally expected from Mold, but there you go. And right now, we're just trying to meet up with Gutsman and Glide to have a bit of a chin wag, a bit of a talk. Well, Gutsman has a huge chin, so it's less of a chin wag and more of a chin earthquake. <laughs> nice. See, look, Yai gets the biggest one because it's f she's fucking rich, basically. That's how life works. Basically, we're making jokes about her forehead. Tremendous, massive, gigantic forehead. Basically, if you watch Code Lyoko, you get what we're aiming at you. What was with the art style for that series? Why did everybody have huge foreheads? I don't know, man. Ask the French. French in the comments. What's going on here? Let me know. Glide looks so different to his Legends counterpart. Oh yeah, it's vastly, like, I'm kind of surprised they decided to make Glide, of all people, into a net navvy. Uh, for, especially from somebody who wasn't really a robot to begin with. It's kind of an odd design choice. Maybe they saw the butler in him. The butler he could be. God, don't challenge me to a thing. 
I don't want to row battle you, I'm tired. Now, people have been saying in the comments that Gutsman has actually gotten stronger because, like, in Battle Network 3, he was kicking the shit out of Undernet Net Navi's left and right. Fair enough, okay. But Mega Man still drop kicks the fuck out of him every time they fight, so... Yeah, also, I know, I know, I should be using, like, the plus 10 attacks or whatever. I'm just an idiot. Sorry. You're all terrible people is what we're trying to say. No, we're not saying that. Please like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Multiple times. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the evil event to happen. And, you know, the thing that will interrupt this precious little battle. And it kind of sucks because I kind of actually wanted to fight Gutsman again. He's easy, sure, but it's a tradition. Oh no, Killer Man's back. Watch out. They're flashing us! Ah! They're flashing us! And then they're gonna flash me! Oh my god, it's just Blast Man and Dive Man. Where the hell are the other guys? They're working in teams, mate. Ah, alright. Wait, did you not get fully deleted? Were there backups of you? How does this whole business work? Probably were backups, yeah. I also do like how, even though there's no water, Dive Man still forgot to bring his legs today. And you can still see a puddle of water. That's true, maybe that's just his ability, he can kind of do that with any surface, but that would be the creative explanation, instead of the real one, Capcom is just lazy. Uh, Blastman, could you, could you, I know, uh, you're vibrating a little bit too much, I know you're happy, but please stop. <laughs> he's, he's just excited to be here, really. A wooga, a wooga! Ah, uh, Gutsman, punch! Shockwave, you have that roll. Ribbon attack, Glide. Okay, Glide can't actually do anything, I can understand. You said he has the richest, most luscious battle chips, though. Well, that was the anime, but in the games, yes, this should make sense. He should be pulling out, like, the Giga Cannon or whatever. Why did you beam away with him? You didn't have to do that. Well, I guess we needed some, like, persuading to carry on with the plot instead of mindless, aimless nostalgia. Uh, I guess it is nostalgia, them getting kidnapped, and Mega Man is the only one who can do anything about it. Oh, is that a, a recurring thing? Sometimes, yeah, I have to admit. Although, that happens with a lot of Mega Man friends in general throughout the series, so... It kind of does. Okay, guys, it's uh, rescue mission time, so we'll see you next time for a little bit more of Battle Network 6. Bye for now!